Crystal here, and I am super excited to be joining you from the Boss Church eCampus, and we are getting ready to have a worship encounter. Are you ready to worship with us? I didn't stand to your feet, clap your hands. I don't know where you are, but if you have a, give, a moment to just give God praise, this is that time. Let's do it together, right? We're jumping in the river. Let's go, let's go.
right here. Open your mouth and begin to bless Jesus right here. Oh God, we bless you. We worship you. We thank you. We honor you, Lord Jesus. For this moment, we posture our hearts right here, right now to receive something from you. Oh God, we bless you, Jesus, for all those who are watching. That God, you would just go and you would meet them. God, you can go places where we can't. So we thank you, oh God, for your presence. We thank you for your power. Thank you for your glory, oh God. We bless you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. There's nothing like the presence of the Lord. Nothing like his, his holiness, his, his power, his presence. And, and just we thank him for that. And we ask him to have his will, let his will be done on here on earth as it is in heaven. Whatever he's bound in, or on, in heaven, let it be loosed on earth. God, whatever you're doing in the heavens, God, we want you to do that on earth, God. Let heaven come down tonight. Let heaven come down on this moment because we need more of you, Jesus. When we speak your name, things begin to change all around us. So we call on your name, Jesus. Come on, wherever you are, just begin to lift your hands and worship him. Come on and worship him right here, right here, right here. 
Tell them, God, you're awesome, God. You're, you're faithful, you're mighty. There's nobody greater than you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus.
stand to your feet every head bowed every eye closed lift your hands just take a second and talk to the Lord we glorify you God we glorify you to us in spite of ourselves Father, we bless you. We glorify you. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your mercy. Now, Father, in the name of Jesus, Holy Spirit, continue to breathe on us. Declare your word in this place that we may be changed. In Jesus' name, amen. Remain standing, remain standing. Grab your Bibles. 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Can we thank the Lord for our praise team, for our band, and for Kevin? Come on, we can do better than that. We thank God for them.
they all doing double duty, triple duty, some of them. What's up, man? Good to see you. Uh, he famous. Uh, triple duty. Um, and so we appreciate their sacrifice uh, just to make the effort to be here with this time with us to share in their gifts and their talents. So we are trying to learn how to appreciate folk. Kevin, love you, man. First Corinthians chapter 13. We're going to read verse, verses 4 through 7. First Corinthians 13, verse 4. Five, six, and seven. I'm reading from the Amplified. So good to see you guys uh, on today. I'm 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 excited. The Lord is kind to us because we are averaging our highest summer attendance since the pandemic. Amen. See, only six of y'all clapping because y'all weren't here when it was just six of us in here in here. But uh, I am grateful to the Lord for so many new faces and some old faces. Uh, not old, you don't look old, but you just you, you get the point. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 4, 5, 6, and 7. When you get it, say, I got it. All right, stay standing for the reading of the word. We're going to read it quick so you ain't got to stand long. It says this, love endures with patience and serenity. Love is kind and thoughtful. And it is not jealous or envious. Love does not brag and is not proud or arrogant. It is not rude. It is not self-seeking. It is not provoked, nor overly sensitive or easily angered. It does not take into account a wrong endured. Verse 6, it does not rejoice at injustice, but rejoices with the truth. Verse 7, love bears all things believes all things, hopes in all things, endures all things. Uh, Y'all, today for, I'm going to try and do this in 35 minutes. Pray my strength. <laughs> See some of your year of little faith. Uh, turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, that's not the song I'm talking about. Find, some, find somebody else. Say, that's not the song. I'm talking about. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. We gone. I was recently preaching uh, in deep south in Tennessee. And uh, the place I was preaching, to give you an idea how country it was, the church was off a dirt road. In 2023, the church was off a dirt road. That's how far in the south I was. I was so far in the south that I prayed all the way to the church. Uh, I was in a place where none looked like me. Uh, so y'all catch that. I was in a place none looked like me. I was with uh, my, my lighter hued brothers and sisters deep south in, the t in Tennessee and we got into a conversation, me and the pastor and some of the deacons, about songs. And uh, one of the guys said that he loves this song called I Will Always Love You. And I said, oh, man, I know that song. And it was, it, was, it was a moment because previous to that second, I ain't know none of the songs they was talking about. And they ain't know none of the songs I was talking about. Because uh, we, you know, just from different places. And so we go on, and I'm like, oh, that's what I'm talking We like this. We like the same song, Raphael. And so we going on and on, and the guy pulls out his phone, and he says, man, I got to play the song now. I just got to hear the song. And he starts playing, I Will Always Love You. But it wasn't, I Will Always Love You. I, I, I said, that don't sound quite the same. Same lyrics, same words, but... That ain't the song I'm talking about. He was playing, those of y'all did not know this, the original version of the song by Dolly Parton. And it is 
country as country can be. And I, I like country music. I ain't against country music. But that ain't the song I was thinking of. I was thinking of Whitney. And I said, that ain't, that ain't the same song. And it's interesting, you all, how we can be talking about the same thing title-wise. We can talk about the same thing even lyric-wise, but it ain't the same song. One person's perception of what it is is drastically different than the others because of context and experience. Their context and their experience was with Dolly's I Will Always Love You. My context and my experience was with Whitney's I Will Always Love You. Same song, not the same song. Same word, not the same word. Love. We talked this last week. You and I can both say the word love and not mean the same thing. Those of y'all weren't here last week, you can write this down. Those of y'all that were, you can highlight it if you still got your notes with you. Uh, we pull from the Greek a little bit because it's a little bit easier in how it breaks down the word. There are multiple words in the Greek for the word love. You've heard this. It's repetitive, but get it again. It's going to stick in your system. Eros is erotic love. Filio is brotherly love. But agape is godlike love. Uh, you can say you love something and not mean the same love that the hearer is hearing. The same thing. We say, I love my mama. I love my boo. I love chicken. They ain't the same loves. You should not love chicken <laughs> like you should not love chicken like you love your mama or your spouse or your kids. It's a different love. And it's interesting, you all, because context and experience gives us Different variations of this word love from different angles and perspectives throughout time. Uh, one guy said this. He said, I love you and I need you. Matter of fact, she said it like this. She said, Nellie, I love you and I need you. No matter what I do, all I think about is you. Even when I'm with my boo. <laughs> ah, boy, you know I'm crazy over you. Let me tell you something. That ain't love. That, that's infatuation with a hint of lust. Usher says, there's always that one person that will always have your heart. Look at you see praise team over there going in. They ain't singing like that when they was up here. Uh, you'll never see it coming because you're blinded from the start. Know that you're that one for me. It's clear for everyone to see. Ooh, baby. You will always be my boo. See, I don't know about y'all, but I know about us. <laughs> that ain't love. That's, that, that's a soul tie with a hint of nostalgia. Be, be, be mindful, sometimes you did not love them. You loved the time in which you were with them. Uh, I need to have you next to me in more ways than one. And I refuse to leave till I see the morning sun. Oh, yeah, I got some of y'all in here. <laughs> the time is right. You hold me tight and love's got me high. Please tell me yes and don't say no. How you tell somebody? <laughs> Honey, not tonight. Move a little close to me. You owe it to yourself. Woo, that's game right there, player. That is game right there. You owe it to yourself to move a little close to me. And I will selfishly take a little for myself, and it's because of you that love won't let me wait. Uh, that, that ain't love, Luther. That ain't love. That's, that's lust with a hint of infatuation. But all of us have a hope of love. One sister said, treated me kind, sweet destiny, carried me through desperation to the one that was waiting for me. It took so long. Still, I believed. Somehow the one that I needed would find me eventually. I had a vision of love. Mariah 
gives us an idea that in the core of all people, there is a vision of what you think love should look like. The struggle, you all, is that most cases, the love that we look for uh-huh. is not actually the love that we need. We, we desire love. But we need love. Let me say it to you like this in the Greek. We desire agape and end up getting eros. And the confusion sets in. Hear this, y'all, especially in these summer months when everybody looking all fly and everybody got on less clothes. Be careful that you don't allow attraction to misrepresent itself as love. It's a married folk in here right now. Did they tell you the truth? If they knew that their spouse was going to look like they look right now, they would have never... Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. There are some characteristics of love that give us a clear indication of what's agape and what is not. Let's go through it. We're going to go through it quickly. First thing, he says in Amplified, love endures with patience and calm peace. Endure, y'all, means to suffer patiently. (sighs) Love has to be able to suffer with patience. Agape has to be able to deal with everything that comes with the recipient of the love. Uh, uh, Agape has the ability to suffer patiently. Watch this, not just suffer patiently, but with calm peace. God's love patiently endures the nature of sin, our disobedience, and contrary choices. Agape, you all, does not change with changes. Agape is consistent even through change. It is consistent through change because it has the ability to suffer through whatever the recipient is going through. Most of us in this room have felt dropped and walked away from because the people that said they loved us did not have an agape that can endure with us through no matter what we went through. And so as we went through hell, their love could not sustain because it was not able to endure what you were walking through in the season. And so Eros had to back up because erotic love is selfish in its desire to feel fulfilled in itself. So when somebody erases you, they cannot handle the changes that come with you because the changes might mean they don't get what they desire out of you. Would do you love somebody when they cannot give you what you desire and you back up from them? We have to be honest. Many of us do not love somebody. We love love how they make us feel and when they stop making us feel that way all of a sudden our love backs up when you don't turn me on anymore then all of a sudden I feel differently about you but love that is agape sustains and endures watch this through changes and hear this and trauma Uh, God's love you all is one that is covering in such a way that it is with you and I, even in traumatic moments. Uh, Margo, come here. Stand, stand right here. Let's stand right in the front. Uh, Derek, come here. Uh, <laughs> Apostle Shola, come here. Do me a favor. Margo, stand this way. You come stand over here. You the devil. Shoulder, do me a favor. Go grab those sheets over there. 
Let's see. We're trying to see if we can make this plain to y'all. Grab all of them. You're going to need help. Pastor DeVoe, come here. You hold the sheets. No, 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 no. Yeah, you hold them. Give him one. Come stand right here. Now, watch this. I hope this makes sense. The enemy. <laughs> Boo. <laughs> Boo this man. Boo. The enemy. The devil. Lucifer. <laughs> comes into life and his every attempt is to steal, kill, and destroy Margot. His every attempt is to put her in places of traumatic injury and pain. The gift that God has placed in her, though, resides under the cover of the flesh. Y'all with me so far? God has birthed in her a call on her life that he wants her to get from A to B to C to D to be who God has called her to be. The enemy is doing everything he can to touch her in a way uh, that disables her ability to be who God has called her to be. So I want you to try and touch her. Now, what happens in the moment when the enemy is trying to attack you is God takes love and covers you. Keep it on now. Touch her. Hit her. Push her. Push her. Now, notice something. She can feel it, but he's not touching her. Come on, come on, Holy Ghost. Hand Jesus another thing of love. And so every time you're about to go through another trauma, God adds another layer of love. Every time the enemy keeps coming and the Holy Ghost keeps handing it to Jesus and Jesus keeps draping you with love. So you may feel the bruises and the pain of what you endured, but the devil never could touch the anointing of God on your life because love, keep on, love endures. Love has endured through everything you've gone through in your life. And every time the enemy came again, God drapes another thing of love over you. Every time the enemy tried to snatch your mind. God drapes more love over you. Every time the devil tried to make you think you were crazy, he drapes love over you. Every time he tried to kill you in a car accident, he drapes love over you. Every time the enemy came after your children, he drapes love over you. And the anointing of God covers you in such a way that by the time you hit 20 and 30 years old, things don't bother you like they used to bother you. And people don't understand why they don't bother you like they used to bother you. You say, baby, I got thick skin. How your skin gets so thick? It's thick with the love of God. It's thick with the glory of God. There's a weight of glory that is sitting on you every time the devil tried to get you. Love. Endure. And so you look up and you've been covered. You've been covered in a way. Now watch this. Other folks would say you're nonchalant. Other folks would say you seem indifferent. Other people would say you don't care anymore. No, it ain't that I don't care anymore. It ain't that the devil ain't attacking me no more. It's that I can't feel it anymore. And the reason I can't feel it anymore is because I've been covered. Ah. All right, y'all sit down. Thank y'all. Thank y'all. You love. Go ahead, Mary. Carry on. Carry your clothes. Huh? I ain't mad at you. I wouldn't take it off either. And that's the thing with some of us in church. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You so uptight about people looking at you and how odd and you look. But you, and you want to start taking off the layers of glory that God has put on you. But those layers belong to you. You earned those layers. You've been through hell for those layers. Don't you let anybody shut down your praise because they don't understand the layers of glory that you've earned over the course of your life, Renee. You earned that glory.
Love endures. Love is also kind and thoughtful. Agape, y'all, ain't nasty and mean. When did the church become so nasty and mean? How you love Jesus and always look so nasty and mean? You got the Holy Ghost, but look like you sucking on lemons 24-7. You can't even laugh right now. Look at you. It's just, just, it's just, it's just, it's just, it's just, it's just, that man ain't tongues. What are you saying? You're so mean. Why are you so, why are you so serious? Love is kind and thoughtful. And as many people have walked away from the church for because of trifling preachers as because of mean members. <laughs> Just why they gotta sit here? Why not? Don't nobody want you. That's why the seat empty. Love is not jealous. Oh, or envious. Agape, y'all, is not jealous. The only jealous love is arrows. If somebody wants you all to themselves, they don't agape you. They eros you. Eros don't like to share. Well, I don't know, 2023, y'all got some weird air rocks going around here. Just <laughs> people, people strange these days. I don't you know. Uh, uh, normal romantic love don't want to share. It, 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 it wants the lover all to themselves. But agape, watch this, recognizes that there are multiple sides to you. And that it would be rude and selfish to prevent others from experiencing the sides of you that God has gifted to bless the body. Uh, there is a side of you that is meant strictly for public consumption. And for Eros, Eros says, well, I don't want you to go anywhere. I don't want you to be around anybody else. But Agape says, let your light so shine before men because there is a side of you that says greater works God is doing in you than what you and I do in private. Be careful dating somebody, marrying somebody, hanging with somebody that wants to confine your call. Agape is not possessive. Agape is not jealous of another. It does not desire what another has. Because agape realizes that what it is, is enough. Let me say that again. Agape understands that what it is, is enough. And when you know that you are enough, you ain't worried about somebody else's extra. Uh, when you know you are steak, you ain't worried about the sides. You, you, you ain't worried about when you are a main, you don't worry about side chicks. You don't worry about side dudes because you know your value and you know your worth and you know who you are. And because you know who you are, you ain't trying to be everybody else to catch somebody's attention that cannot appreciate who you are. Why you want somebody's attention? They can't appreciate that you are Ferrari because they used to Tonka trucks. Jealousy and envy are selfish hoarders at their core. Love doesn't brag. It's not proud. It ain't arrogant. Agape, y'all hear this? carries humility within it. Any love that treats another person as a trophy is not agape. Any love that declares its value is greater than somebody else's is not agape. Be careful, y'all, 
of social media love. Uh, those of y'all, some of y'all older folks don't, you don't know what I'm talking about. Social media love is them couples. Now, if you if you if you one of these these couples, don't say nothing. Just keep look straight ahead. And just be like, ooh, he showed preaching. Social media love is them couples that all they post is them holding hands in the park. Post how much I love my baby. Them stupid posts, my king and my queen mess. Y'all ain't never been to no other country. My king. Uh, them posts, uh, them taking trips places and sitting in rose gardens and round rose petals and and pictures of them and their kids, kids sitting all the behaved and all matching clothes. And you're like, oh, my God, that, that's the family I want, uh, relationship goals. And them same jokers in real life. He cheating on her. She cheating on him. They beating the kids. Kids ain't eight in three weeks. Kids fell in every class. Ain't got no clean clothes but the ones they took the pictures in. And you're like, oh, I want that. That is not agape. Agape does not present itself as what it is not. Agape stands as what it is. And you never have to wonder what is happening behind the scenes and what Mr. Wizard is doing. The truth of the matter is you don't want social media love. You want a love that is sustained in real life. A love that, yes, y'all may match on Monday, but Tuesday the clothes ain't clean, but you still love each other. You, you can't go to Europe every year, but you can go down to Walmart and you can still love each other. You, you ain't got to get a new car, but you can be on the bus and love each other. You can walk and love each other. You cannot have a house with four bedrooms and two bathrooms and still love each other. Agape does not care about the presentation. It cares about the substance. Love ain't rude. Agape, y'all, and I had to look up the word rude. I've been called rude before. So I said, let me look this up, see if this applies. I concluded it don't. That's just me. Agape, watch this, is not offensively impolite. How can you and I say we love God, but we are downright offensively impolite to the homeless person? Downright offensively impolite to anybody whose skin color does not match ours. Downright offensively impolite to anybody who got tattoos or who got a skirt that's too short when the truth of the matter is your skirt would still be too short if gravity hadn't taken a hold. Love is not self-seeking. How you how you gonna say draw close for yourself? That's self-seeking. When the love that is given, watch this, requires an action of you that pleases the love giver, that love is not agape. God does not love you and I for anything from us but us. God does not, uh, uh, mm, okay, I'm going to say this, uh, and we're going to keep it moving. Uh, usually I don't say this in church, but God don't want your money. God don't need your money. God wants you. But when he gets you, your money should come with you. Ah, yeah. Thank you, Jordan. I'm going to say that twice. God don't need your money. God does not want your money. God wants you. But when he gets you, he should get your money. Love ain't self-seeking. Let me keep moving because y'all about to walk out. Love is not provoked. 
it says this in, in, in parentheses in the Amplified, nor is love overly sensitive or easily angered. That's why I put it like this. Agape ain't a punk. Agape love is not a punk. And truth, truth of the matter is, anybody that's a parent here should understand this. Because if you stop loving your child every time they did something, <laughs> anybody married here should understand. Because if you stop loving your spouse every time they did something, any divorced person here should understand. Because sometimes you could have made it if the love could have endured and both people had the capacity not to be punk. God understands this because we earned judgment a long time ago. But his love is not easily provoked or angered. Matter of fact, the Bible says that it is the goodness of God that draws us into repentance. Only God has the capacity to love Daryl when Daryl consistently slaps God in God's face. God, only God has the ability to stand when I say no and still say yes. When I say I ain't, he says I still got you. When I say I don't want to do it, he says I'm still going to bless you. When I say I ain't got it, he says I know you do, but I'm still going to give it to you anyway. We are, only God can stand in the place and keep loving us in spite of us and not back up from us every Every time we do something trifling, love does not take into account wrong endured. Let me tell you something. Some of y'all are so petty. Petty. You petty. I know you petty because you're looking at me right now. You're trying to figure out when you're going to get me back for calling me petty. Some of y'all got superpowers that are petty superpowers. You, you, you get strength in your pettiness. You, you got the right quip to say at the right time, just at the right angle to make somebody be like, oh. And it ain't enough to make them ball over. It's just enough to make a ooh. That, 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 that petty that's so, so calculating, it's like a splinter that by the time they get home three hours later, they still like, ooh. And you at home, like Lex Luthor, just grinning. <laughs> that was brilliant. <laughs> love ain't petty. How do you love somebody and keep track of their mistakes? Are you looking at me? What they got to do with petty? Because that's what petty people pull from. You do something wrong on Monday in January of 1994, and it is, he, he know, and it is July 2023, and all of a sudden, you say, you need anything? Oh, now you care. What? I, 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 I don't want to be sexist. I don't want to be sexist. Ladies online, ladies in church, please don't be mad at me. I'm not trying to be sexist. But y'all petty powers are supreme. It's, it's like a file cabinet somewhere in your brain that says undealt with offenses. And it's for everybody. And I, I love y'all because everybody can get it. It's, 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 it's wife, husbands, kids, brothers, sisters, aunties, pastors, bishops, elders, grandma, mama, God. It's everybody in the list. Love keeps no record of wrong. Say, well, pastor, if I don't keep track, they're going to mess around and do it again. See, number one, love endures all things. Love does not rejoice at injustice, but rejoices with the truth. Church, those of y'all in here and those of you watching online, agape does not bend based on politics. 
I, I'm, I'm, I'm so sick of these preachers whose politics override the God they say they serve. Injustice is injustice, and agape calls injustice out. It is not agape when black men and women are killed disproportionately to anyone else and the church says nothing. It's not agape when 233,000 people in the United States and 115,000 people in California are homeless and the church says nothing. It is not agape when 34% of students are below basic reading level in the fourth grade and 27% of students in the eighth grade cannot read at the basic level in this country and the church says nothing. It is not agape when black young men find no way out of the hood but to sell drugs and murder and the church is busy shouting inside the walls and says nothing. It is not agape if there is one woman on this planet that feels the only way to make ends meet is to sell her body. That ain't agape. It is not agape, y'all. When one in 18 people in the U.S. make less than $6,000 a year as individuals and less than $13,000 for a family of four, and 18 million people in this country live in these conditions, including 5 million children before the pandemic. That ain't agape. But we build in bigger buildings. We get in nicer houses. We get in prettier cars. And then we shout to the rooftop because now you can afford Louboutin and Gucci. But yet there's somebody that has no roof over their head. That ain't agape. What we have labeled as love is not love. We are not talking about the same song. When you're going to lay hands again, my child need deliverance. Lay hands yourself. This ah, it is not the place uh, where it is carried out. This is the place of preparation for where it should be carried out. Hands are laid in here and deliverance occurs in here so that you are free to do deliverance out there with those that need it. We ain't talking about the same song. What well, we've been talking about love ain't love. And you think about it, try and change the song up. Come here, boys, to men. And they said, these jokers said, I'll make love to you like you want me to. I'll hold you tight. Baby, all you got night. <laughs> no, I ain't singing that. Mm -mm. But if you change it, it sounds weird. I'll make patience to you. <laughs> and I don't sound sexy, do it? Uh -uh. I'll make endurance to you. I'll, I'll, I'll make non-listing of your mistakes. It don't sound as good, but the truth of the matter is that's the love we want. That's the love we need. Uh, well, yeah, come here, come here, Donnie, Bishop Donnie Hathaway said this in one of the greatest love songs of all time. Uh, Donnie says in the middle of the song, he says, I love you in a place where there is no time mm, and there's no space. Uh, that, that, that's some love right there. Love is not confined to location and season, Tori. You, your love is not confined to how you are today, but love is confined, watch this, to the vessel and the recipient of the love. So wherever the recipient walks, the love is with you. It is not confined to space and time, shape and size. It is not confined to how much hair 
hair you got and how much hair you lose. It is not confined to your money and your status. Neither this love is not understood because many of us got eros and don't have agape, but agape is not confined to what you look like today. That's why the Bible says neither death nor life nor angels nor demons nor present nor future nor powers nor height nor depth or any other creation can separate me from the love of Jesus Christ that is within me. His love stays through tuberculosis. His love stays through cancer. His love stays through displaced hips. His love stays through high blood pressure. His love stays through divorce. His love stays through miscarriage. His love stays through abortion. His love stays through rape. His love stays through molestation. His love stays through job loss. His love stays through suicidal thoughts. His love stays through homelessness. His love stays through poverty. His love stays through brokenness. His love stays through trauma. His love stays even when demons are present. We we ain't talking about the same song. But the prodigal son and his daddy, that's love. Naomi and Ruth, that's love. David and Jonathan, that's love. Shem and Japheth covering Noah, that's love. Paul and Timothy is love. Moses and the children of Israel, that's love. Jacob and Rachel, part one, is love. Jacob and Rachel, part two, is love. Jesus and the disciples is love. Jesus and the world is love. Jesus and Daryl is love. Love bears all things. Love believes all things. Love hopes all things. Love endures all things. We have to love people enough to put up with them. We have to love people enough to believe in them. We have to love people enough to have hope for them. And we got to love people enough to love them. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Father, we repent. For not loving as you called us to. Some of us in this room, God, we have not properly agape our children. We have not properly agape our spouses. We have not properly agape homeless man and woman. We have not properly agape the least of these. And Lord, we don't We don't have a response other than Holy Spirit, help us. Help us to love like you love. And when the time comes, we will be talking about the same song you're talking about. For Lord, we remember when we were sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore very deeply stained within, sinking to rise no more. But the master of the sea, you heard our despairing cry. From the waters, you lifted me. Now safe am I. And I acknowledge that love lifted me. When nothing else could help, Holy Spirit, let us love each other, ourselves, and others as you have loved us. Just for a second, with heads bowed, eyes closed. I want you to consider whatever the Holy Spirit is saying to you now. If there's somebody that you should repent to. Because you did not love them 
with agape is required. For some of you in this room, heads bowed, eyes closed. You got to forgive yourself because you haven't even loved yourself as God has loved you. So our heads are bowed, our eyes are closed. Just take a second. Talk to the Lord. If you need to write something down, the Holy Spirit gives you something to write down, feel free to do so. But I want to give you a second to respond whatever the Lord is saying to you in this moment. Father, we thank you for your courageous love. The love that sent your son to come down to earth and die for us. Your love that delivers us, that rescues us. Father, we are grateful. We are thankful. We celebrate your love and we ask today that may we reflect that love to the world. May we show that love to the world in everything we do, in how we walk, in how we talk, in what we do, in how we live, that love, we will show your love. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name we worship. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.